All right, Heisenberg, to kill him. Good, yeah. Let's do uh, let's do some Tai Chi. Let's actually work out. Uh, start by bringing everything back to the center. So allow your feet to touch. <clears throat> Bring your hands together in the center. Take a deep breath and then relax. We're gonna we're gonna start with a a qigong that uh, we've been doing uh, recently. This is monk searching for the moon in the ocean. So without any waiting, as if you're lifting something, grip your feet, pushing your hands, palms all the way into the sky, and then let everything relax. So breathing, inhaling all the way up, expanding, stretch, and then keeping just enough structure, suppressing, long inhales, try to keep your back and your neck straight, keep the tongue connected to the roof of the mouth. Do two more, gripping, pushing all the way up, stretching through the fingertips. And on the last one, when you get to the top, stay upright, bring your feet together, let your hands relax. Bring everything back to the center. Bring the feet together, hands together. We're gonna do uh, one stretch. We're gonna do one more qigong, and then one stretch for the legs, and then we're gonna get right to the tai chi form. Uh, so, from the center, you could do one of two things, either lock your waist, and just turning everything above, or if you're turning below, be sure to keep the pressure off of your knees, stretching, let your tailbone sink, pushing up through the head top. Turning around the center, the eyes are looking even further. Time it with your breathing. Turning the other direction. And then center. So keep looking past as if your eyes are leading to reach the goal. The muscles and tendons may stop, but the mind keeps going. Do one more in each direction to balance it out. Or going at your own pace, take as many rotations as you need. And then when you come back to the center, just let everything relax. Breathing deep. We're going to do another, uh, tonight we're going to work out. So we're going to do another qigong that requires a little bit of power. So uh, I'm turned to the side, but you want to keep your feet parallel, the hips, shoulders, and hands. We're going to start sort of slow, pushing the thumb and the big toe. And then breathe, index finger, index toe. Middle finger, middle toe. Fourth finger, fourth toe. Little finger, little toe. And then working your way back across. Fourth finger, fourth toe. And you see I'm using my whole body to press. So it looks like I'm shifting a little bit. But as if I'm pushing 
down through the toe and the finger into the ground, thumb and big toe. You can go at your own pace if the breathing doesn't feel natural. So we're inhaling, everything's relaxed, and then activating just one finger. A lot easier on the hands, on the feet. It's more challenging. Some time ago, a student observed, they said, wow, with this one, you're getting all of the meridians on the, the extent of the limbs from the hands and the feet, and working your way back and forth across the fingers and toes by activating the extents of each of them. You're activating the whole meridian. And there's one more thing, these should all be connected to the center. So when your pinky is going and your pinky toe is going, that should connect back to the Dantian. So breathing, even the Dantian pressing, are we back across, we reach all the way back to the thumb? Because on the next set, we're gonna inhale all the fingers and toes at once. So expanding, breathing, as if you're clawing into the ground using your feet and your hands. If you imagine some type of big cat, tiger, uh, leopard running. Full inhale, forceful exhale from the center. Use the pressure. Two more. And when you come back up, bring everything back to the center. Put your mind into the center, into the Dantian, and your body will line up naturally on its own. Take a deep breath, relax. We're gonna do uh, just a little bit more stretching. So, uh, keeping the feet parallel, we're gonna push one foot forward, push the tailbone back. You can use your the stable leg for support. You can use both hands, reaching either way, stretch the whole back of your leg from your lower back from the kidney all the way to your toes. So pointing your toes towards the ceiling, push your tailbone further away, try to keep your neck straight. You can either turn, turn your chin towards the stretch or turn your crown towards the stretch. Either way is okay as long as you breathe. Long, deep breathing. When you're ready, grip the ground, standing upright, come back to the center. Make your feet parallel, turn again. Push one foot out, push the tailbone back and away. Standing, reaching, breathing deep. Make the stretch. Turn your toe upwards. Try to let everything relax. Keep your back and your neck straight. Push the chin or push the crown either way. Breathing when you're ready, grip the ground to balance the upward moving force with a downward power sticking into the ground. We're gonna do one more set of these. By the way, if you if you know what you're doing and you like to do the tapping on the back of the leg, uh, you can do that as well. So, gripping the ground, push the tailbone back and away. And then once you reach the stretch, once you reach past the toe, you can tap as you like, as long as you remember to continue the long, deep breathing. We've just done a bunch of Qigong. So you can do a lot of inhale, rapid, I'm sorry, slow inhales, and then rapid exhale, deflating quickly. And then change, remember, the other side. So gripping the ground. Extend the foot, push the tailbone back and away. Reach forward. Once you reach the stretch, once you reach the maximum, 
just like the hammer on a piano hitting the strings. After some time, the strings need to be tuned. In this case, it's just the opposite. They become too tight. We want to tune them to become more relaxed. Remember to breathe. And then when you're ready, come back to the center. Bring your feet together. Bring your hands together. And then check again the calibration from the top. The crown chakra has everything up there. The brow is relaxed. The vision is open. The shoulders are in the correct position. <clears throat> Relax your lower back, tailbone, the inside of the waist. The knees have a bend. They're not straight. The ankles are strong and the feet inside of the shoe or the sock is active. And while we're here, let's actually do one other thing. When we talk about activating the feet, when you're doing the qigong, when you're doing this kind of standing and when you're doing the meditation, if you pushing up through the center, we talk about lifting the pelvic floor, we talk about gripping the feet. Sometimes when we're practicing martial art, we really want to activate the feet. They have sometimes animal forms. They say tiger or hawk, the talons, claws coming out, digging into the ground. But when we're standing, when we're practice balancing, you want to have the feet active, but they're not, we're not gripping it. The same thing when we talk about the breathing for the stomach, this kind of breathing. We don't want to have this, it's, we don't want to hurt it. It's not Hercules, too much power, right? It's, it's a light uh, flexion. So, before we continue, does anyone have thoughts? Questions, comments, ideas. Let's do the Tai Chi form. We're going to do all three sections, and I'd like to uh, keep it at a, at a nice pace, a steady pace. There's many ideas for practicing uh, Tai Chi fast or slow. And when we would practice in a group, the correct way is because we change directions, we're changing north, south, east, and west in four directions. We want to become good enough that when if we turn to the east, and, and when we turn east, we're following Aaron, and we can follow his timing and, and maybe even some of his movements. And then when we turn to the south, we see Mark, and we can follow his uh, style and the if he has a, a faster pace or a different timing. And when we turn uh, west, we see different people. And so this is like uh, Tai Chi as a group. It's, it's a lot more difficult to do on Zoom is like, when you're playing cards with a, a, a group of card players and there's more than one person in your, and you're sort of sharing the hand. So uh, when we get back together in person, we've talked about this before, we'll work on that. For now, uh, try to focus the timing, try to work on keeping the flow, uh, whatever parts of the form that you'd like to focus on. If you have questions, you can bookmark them. You can also blurt them out. We may not stop at that moment, but we'll come back to address them. And then uh, after we've had a chance to be sure we've done Tai Chi, we'll, we'll break down the posture to examine what's, uh, what's happening with it. All right. Take a space that is your center. Push your head top all the way up. Relax your feet into the ground. Feel all four corners of each foot connected to the earth. Relax your tailbone and shoulders at the same time. And then breathing deep as if the Chi is filling the arms they still have weight and they sink into the correct position. We're going to stand on the right foot, opening shoulder width wide. This is preparation. Tai Chi, Chi Chi, the start of Tai Chi. Breathing, opening on the right side. This is grasp the sparrow's tail. Step forward square, ward off. Breathing, grasp the sparrow step. Remember, there's no breaks. If we add the pause, it's just so that we can see. Roll back. Press. Push. Double press. 
press, double push, horizontal split, turning from north to west, diaosho, dampine, turning back to the north, this is lift hands to up posture, the feet are aligned to the grid, square step, breathing deep to expand, pushing down as we push up, turning 90 degrees. This is crane opening the wings. Play the harp, brush knee, press to the center. Square step back. This is crane opening the wings. Number two. Play the harp. Press to the center. Shifting to the rear foot, this is hold the moon in the chest. Bon Lan Shui. Corner. Open. Focus the power. <clears throat> this next one is seal off and press in. Turning 90 degrees to the north, this is return tiger to mountain. Bring the feet together in the center. Kobu. Square step facing south. Center line is vertical. Palm press to the center. Take a deep breath to roll. Press. Push. Look left. Glance right. Double push. Horizontal split hands turning from south to east. Hook. Breathing deep. In ballet, it's called the fifth position. You can turn your feet, or you can take as many steps as you need to turn 180. The right hand covers, left hand, turn back to look at the moon. Repulse the monkey. Number one, press, breathing, grip your feet, scoop, stepping back, press to the center, breathing. Number three, scoop, step, Press, share fay is diagonal flying. High design is needle at the bottom of the sea. Sen tong bay fan through back. Turning, block, punch, kick, square step, breathing deep, expand. Focus power to the center. Keep your spine upright, facing forward. Di Bu Hua. Change step. Breathe deep, relax to roll back. Press to the center. Push. Look left. Glance right. Double push, turning from east to north, horizontal split hands. The out shows hook, side whip. This is cloud hands in the second section. We shift and press to the right, and then turn, step, press to the left. Breathing, shift the weight, press. Step, shift, Press, and then one more, press, step, and press, the out shows hook. Corner whip means we're turning 90 degrees. This is Gao Panma. Turn, kick, Gao Panma number two faces the south. Kick, turning again, east 
scoop, brush, press to the center. Low shi. Ao wu. Tashong. Low shi. Jin bu straight step. Zai shui is punch down. Turning. Block. Punch. Kick. Square step. Lan. Shui. This is called Zou Hua, left to flex, sometimes nicknamed bend the bar. Kick. For the big rollback, keep your neck straight. Try to keep your torso straight as well. Temple and kidney. Big rollback, breathing. Temple. Kidney. Left foot steps behind the right. Scoop the moon from the ocean. Kick. Brush. This is two winds going in the ears. Stepping back. Connect left side. Kick. Left side. Turning. Natural stepping. One. Two. Three, pull right side, kick right side, block, punch, kick. Breathing deep, we're closing the second section, open. Focus power, as if you're enclosed, pressing off. Turning to the north, this is return tiger to the mountain. The whole body is a spring, bring the feet together. Now the whole body is twisted spring, unwind to the center, breathing deep to roll back. Press south. Push. Left. Glance right. Double press. Horizontal, split, hook. This is side whip. We're facing east. This is wild horse parting its mane. Square step. The left shoulder and hip dip facing forward, coming up through the circle, expanding. Number two, breathing deep the right shoulder and hip. Dip coming up through the circle, expanding wild horse number three, and then return to deep breathing to roll back. Go left, glance right. Double press, horizontal, split, hook. This is side whip, we're facing north, and this is four corners. So we're going to the northeast diagonal. Press, turning to look over the left shoulder, the right foot steps back, open, lift, press. Looking over the left shoulder again, scooping to close, lift, press to the corner. Looking over the left shoulder again, stepping back, open, scoop, and press. Facing east, this is a left grasp, the sparrow's tail, right press and step, turning into a eastbound press. Breathing deep, push. We're back to the main course. Look left. Glance right. Double press. Horizontal. Split. Hook. This next one is a corner whip. So we're turning our square to the west. This is the first snake creeping down and 
Jinji Du Li on the right. Breathing. Golden rooster standing on one leg. Left. And then repulse the monkey one. Press. Breathing. Two. Three. Share fe. Diagonal flying, just like the second section, except the conclusion into high design is the left hand is the needle at the bottom of the sea. San Tong Bay is the same. Turning, block, grip the ground, punch and kick, square step, inflating chi, focus the chi to a point, keep your structure upright, fold knees, di bu hua, change step, spring back to deep breathing, to roll back, press, push, Look left, glance right, double press, horizontal, split, hook, the last one was to the corner, so this one is parallel. They switch back and forth, each hook in the third section, this is cloud hands, press right, press left, right. Left, once more, right, left, hook, corner whip, so we're turning to the west. Keep the waist turn going, still facing west. This is snake, flicks its tongue. When we turn 180, grip the left foot, connect right side, kick right side. Cross kick, square step, brush low, neck straight, punch, half, di bu hua. Change step, breathe deep to roll back. By this point, you feel warm. You're making a lot of chi. Use the breathing, the cool air, to offset it so you don't feel that you need to go as fast. Look left. Glance right. Double press. Horizontal split. Hook. Last one was straight. This is corner. This is the second. Snake creeps down. And this time when we come back, we're stepping up to seven stars. Turning, one, uh, turning 90 degrees to the north for Kwahu, ride a tiger. Turning 180 degrees to the south for Bai Lian, stepping back, block, punch straight south. This is open the bow to shoot a tiger, block, punch, kick. Closing the third section, open, focus the power, roof on, slip turning to the north, this is return tiger to the mountain, block, punch right, punch left, use the momentum to return back to the center. Still a little bit of breathing. Uh, how many? How many feel warm? Feel like you've, you were actually working out a little bit. You got some. You got some chi. Let's let's do this on one side or the other. It doesn't really matter. Slowly, long, full inhales, taking as much cool air as you can, and then the exhale is more relaxed, faster. So breathing, fully inflate, and then on the exhale as quickly as you can expel the warm air from the inside. While we're doing this Qigong, we're gonna do something a little bit different tonight. 
But we're going to talk about Qigong from the idea from a Chinese uh, viewpoint. And this is very different than the American idea of you, you are what you eat. Instead, in Qigong culture, you are what you breathe. So we think, oh, if I eat the fatty food or if I eat too much protein or carbs or something, my body will process it in a certain way. In Dr. Yang's book, he says that your, your metabolism and your body is rebuilt not by the materials that you put into it, but instead the amount of power that the construction cells can use to process that, those materials. So in this case, we want to have as much energy, as much oxygen, as much chi as we can. Did we change directions yet? If not, on the other side, breathing deep, fully inflate, and then exhale. So we can use this to analyze how much energy we feel warm, and the air outside of us is cooler. That means that we can take in a lot of oxygen, which is cool, without having to heat it, because the body's already warm. Going at your own pace. I'm not counting, so we're not going to balance these, probably. If you're counting, you can balance them if you like. <clears throat> you can use that as an exercise in letting go, if you have that type of tendency. It's okay. We can all smile. We all have that a little bit. Breathing deep. Do two or three more at this pace. Long inhales as much oxygen and fast exhales, flushing the carbon dioxide from the system as quickly as possible. Lots of clean fuel, getting rid of the exhaust. And at some point, just come back to the center. Let your hands relax. Bring your feet back to the center. Bring your hands back to the center. And then recalibrate. <clears throat> relax. Does anyone have questions, thoughts? comments, ideas, something that we're working on from the form. <clears throat> Two things. I would love to review uh, the bow and arrow at the end, but before that, repulse the monkey, I can never remember whether the hands are circling in or circling out. Okay, let's let's actually do this. Let's, let's face each, each other, I'll, I'll mirror you. It doesn't matter which hand we're doing because we're going to just do left and right. So whichever hand I have, if you see, we're going to use this, my shoulder width here is the gate. So when we're talking about what is the, the size and scale of things, the gate is the entrance way through which we have to get to. If, this, if I'm looking at this door as my gate here, right? This is the size. Well, when we're talking about martial art, boxing something, we have to talk about this as the gate, right? This is the shape of the gate. So with this one, we're scooping in front of the gate and then we're replacing. So when the opponent puts something in front of us, right? We're here minding our own business and, and power is coming to the center. This scoop is to get to the inside. And then when we move it, we're replacing it with our own hand, right? So we're gonna just sort of do this exercise. If you scoop and then you turn and look 90 degrees at your palm this way, and then this other hand is coming up and pressing to the center. We're gonna do this a couple of different ways, by the way. And now, the same, imagine that you've pressed to the center and there's something in the middle here. So now this hand has to scoop. And then we're gonna turn 90 degrees to the other side and press this one right to the center. So scoop, turn, press. Scoop, turn, press. Scoop, turn, press. And you can actually do it with both arms. So we press here, and then from this one, I have one hand forward, one hand to the side, I'm looking forward. I'm gonna break it down into a rudimentary process. We bring both hands, like we're holding the ball, 
And then we turn 90 degrees the other way and change. Press one hand forward, one hand to the side. Breathing deep. Bring the hands together like you're holding the ball. Forward and side. And so we're going the scoop to get to the ball and then turning this way. So this is a very basic way of thinking of it. So, and then it's combined with the footwork. So if there's something right in front of me, I want to scoop under it, move it out of the way, and replace it with this thing. So what that means is what this hand is doing on the side, there's a question, right? If we do the scoop, but when I turn, do I leave it facing this way? Or after I scoop, do I turn the palm out this way and press this way? It doesn't matter. It it's, can actually be either way. And the thing that determines it is the action happening in your mind. So if my punching bag is attacking me, right, and I scoop, and I, oh, you can't see because of the thing. All right, now the camera's that corner. <clears throat> I can keep something pressed away if, if the wall is attacking me, right? I can keep something pressed away this way by keeping this round structure without using any effort, or this thing also if I keep it pressed away here. So either way, the idea is after we get inside the opponent, uh, their, their thing that's coming in, right? If it's a stick, right? They have something that's coming towards us this way. I want to get, and, and you, you can use it if there's a bladed weapon, you just have to avoid the blade, right? I want to move that to the side and then reach in to the center. So this is a, this is a basic. We can practice something like this as well, where if we bring, this is a, a, a sort of more traditional, but I feel like it's a, it's a, I don't know the application for why the hand is in the back. You may see some schools of Tai Chi when they're stepping back this way. This hand is all the way back and then it's curling over to press forward. And then this other hand coming back, turning to press forward, right? So you get this kind of, uh, it's almost like the reverse of a monkey swinging on the, the vines, right? This, this idea is pressing back, turn, press. And so what we're doing uh, most basically is item replacement. There's something in front of me, I scoop, I move it out of the way, and then coming up from the center, in through the center is the press, except we're going backwards. So let's actually try, if we're facing east and we go back to the, going backwards to the west, if we're just minding our own business, we're gonna scoop with one hand, step the hand and foot backwards, pressing to the center, breathing, scoop, hand and foot going backwards. Back to the center, scoop, opening, pressing, scoop, step, press. So this is this being very basic. Another thing that we have to keep in mind is on this one we're retreating, so we're going backwards, and this is this can be a dangerous activity because we don't have eyes in the back of our head. So. One of, the, one of the reasons for turning to make sure that the, that the weapon or whatever is in front of us is moved to the side is because we're going to be going backwards. So we want to turn, we want to still see our opponent in front of us, but we need to turn at least enough to make sure that we have a clear step to go back here before we press. So, yeah, go ahead. No point, but... One thing that I think keeps throwing me is it feels like if you're going out this way that the first thing you're doing is kind of opening up your gate before you're coming in to protect it and the instinct is kind of to go that way. Which okay, so this is, that's, that's, it's a good question, that's very natural. This is more of a Bagua activity and this is more of a Tai Chi activity, right? We can use the same thing. What you're saying is correct. If there's something and it's coming towards me this way, right, I have a weapon, I could the same way that I can open from here, I can also from over top go this way. Uh, the, the sort of directionality of this form is just like we have in the very beginning, grasp the sparrow's tail and ward off, right? Just turning these two, coming from the inside, I'm calling this the inside out this way, right? We could call it yin and yang, whatever. But this, this fan action coming from the inside out turning, and you'll find this everywhere. We have it in hook, 
right? We have it uh, in what we're doing right now, which is this repulse the monkey scoop. We have it, crane can do the same thing. So this turning of the forearms, keeping the palm, keeping power to the elbows, right? This is why when we do look left and glance right, we don't just let the, the elbows, they're expanded, it's round, there's this shape. And so the same thing, we can do, uh, let's see, what if we did repulse the monkey, scoop and step back this way, scoop and step back. It's something slightly different, it's a different activity. But it's, but you could do it, you could turn it into a Tai Chi exercise. This, the most basic one, again, somebody's punching to the center, we just move that out of the way and replace it with ours. And what they're gonna try to do is, nobody's going to the outside, right? If somebody wants to get to you, they, they try to go to the inside. So even if my hand is here, they're gonna reach into the center, which means I'm going out, this out, then scoops back in to move to the side, right? I need to set up a like an like a robot arm that I can use as a as a thing. Go ahead, question. Just have to be super quick in order to not create that opening. Well, here's the thing: if 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 I'm just standing here, I don't have to make that whole scoop. I can put my hand up and turn, right? It's simply this. I don't have to make that full scoop. But just like everything else, if we want to talk about, like you want to practice pressing, right? Punching into the bag. I'm gonna, hang on a second, I'm gonna do something here. So, so if I want to practice punching the bag like this, I can just do this, I can just punch here, that's cool. Or I can take my fingertips, drop them to the ground, pull them up my, ankle, hip, all the way to my shoulder, and then press forward, right? To get this super huge loop. And if we do that a thousand times, right, like the Kung Fu masters tell us to do, eventually that will look like this. And we can generate the same power by roiling the joints coming up, like a, like a bubbling sensation coming up through. This is a chi, this is a, what a Bruce Lee would call a one inch punch, right? Uh, a shocking power, right? It looks doesn't look like you're moving and suddenly you send a shock wave through your hand. So, uh, does, that, does that make more sense? In the beginning, we're practicing everything very, very large frame, right? We make a very large yoga, something crane opening the wings this way. But later, if I have an opponent and things going very fast, I'm not going to say, oh, uh, Mr. Opponent, please wait while I do this. That's a crane. It's, I'm just putting my fingertips just across the eyes. I'm just poking my fingertips right into their eye sockets. And just, I don't even have to be accurate. All I have to do is, this is the space of somebody's face. I don't know if you can see there's, there's an Everlast logo on this thing. It's just that. It's just get the hands like a brush, right? If you can break the nose with your fingers, you can make it so that they'll have cuts on their eyes with their fingernails. When it's your wife is in the situation, you're just taking out the cameras, right? And this other hand is, they, maybe they have weapon, maybe they're punching, maybe who knows. This is, is very, very different than this one, right? Somebody comes to you and you have this and you, you go. So there's a difference between, but the form, we're practicing here, right? You feel the expansion. That way, when, the, when it's a martial art, when it's very small, you're just moving, right? It's just, it's quick. So for the, for the Kung Fu, if we're talking about boxing art, nobody's practicing like this. Same thing with the punch. Anybody opening this way, they're gonna get hit, right? And by the way, there is a purpose for that. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, in some martial art circles, they call it, Target denial. So you open a target, and TC actually taught this as, as part of his rollback. So he would say his rollback is open this way. You may see other yang style forms when they, they have a very similar square step, rectangular step, and uh, their ward off is here. And then they bring the hand up and they turn the palm and they turn this way, and then they turn and they press. TC would say it's first it's opening like hugging. Right, you want to open. Yeah, if you got, if you got it for anyone that needs to go for the uh, seven o'clock thing, 
uh, do your thing for the rest of us. We'll be here for another, a little bit longer. Uh, so he would say for the rollback, it's an opening. And the opponent thinks, oh, I have all this space. I can come right to the center. And as soon as we do, we deny that target. We give them what seems to be a, an open target. We give them what seems like uh, space to enter into our gate. And then we immediately close it. As they come into the gate, we close it and flush them out to the side. Right. So this same kind of thing for repulse the monkey, uh, we can, you, you can also think of this as disarms. Right. Imagine Mark has a gun. And he's pointing at me, right? Is repulse the monkey is here. No, no, don't shoot, right? You put your hands up. And so the first part of that is if they have a gun here, you're knocking it out of the way and pressing into the thing. So this is a, a very basic, we can practice these very fancy, this fancy one that has this turning where we step back and press to the center and then uncoil the forearm. And press and uh, sort of the, the middle ground is what we've just been working on: scoop, step, press, scoop, step, press, <clears throat> and then the most basic open hit. Yeah. Repulse the monkey. I like to think of it as there's somebody jabbing at you with their side, same side, and you're pushing the jab away, and it opens up their face. Yes. So away you're right in their face. So Mark, Mark and I have, have worked on this at, at the uh, at the gym in, in Malibu, and this one, uh, by the way, one of the reasons for the naming for this, we, we don't call it uh, repulse the bear. We could, but in this particular case, because something Mark said very important is the same same side. So in martial arts, a lot of times for Western style boxing, they're punching this way, the opposite hand and foot, right? But when we're attacking with the same side that we're moving with, a lot of times that's considered monkey style, right? So monkeys, when they're walking, right, they're walking with the same hand and foot. Humans walk opposite, right? That's what makes us look, look more evolved, right? But monkey, doing the monkey style, right, when they turn it. So this kind of uh, thing is designed against somebody that's reaching from the same side. So if I reach this way, you should be able to mirror everything that I do. If my right side reaches in, you should be able to, with your left side, step back and then change as the power comes in, scoop and press. So you'll see my body acts like a door, like a panel, right? So if you imagine is here, I scoop with this one, step back, press, scoop, press, like a door frame, scoop on turning, like an angle this way. I have a, a big piece of wood, and I kind of want to get it, but but the but your position will also match mirror the opponents. As they reach in, right, if they reach in on this side, and I'm standing here, I'll step back and be here. So their body's angled, and the hand's matching, right? And so, uh, this is also easier to teach when there's and there's two, two people in person, right? A lot easier. Questions, thoughts, comments? Because I want to do something else. Uh, Aaron's, Aaron misses out. Uh, if you have a, a chair, we're going we're gonna to work on something. Uh, this is going to be related to material that's coming up. It's not uh, Kung Fu martial art, but it's a different part of the Tai Chi. We're going we're gonna to do, practice doing some massage. How many in my class have done... Uh, the the pi da, which is like hitting this way, hitting. We actually did some today already. We did this pi da hitting. So get yourself a chair, some place comfortable that you can sit. <clears throat> and we're gonna just work on one one part of this. I can move forward because you don't actually need to see uh, <clears throat> what's happening. But I want you to take. This, this pinky knuckle, and we're just going to start working with one part of it. So if we look at this, it's this one right here, outside on the corner. Uh, if, you're, if you're sitting there, we're going to use the, the heart meridian, which passes through that knuckle. So if you reach under your armpit, your armpit's like a divot, and on either side of it, there's two pieces of muscle that come down. If you follow the one in the back, and you follow it out along where you, if you had a seam that went through your elbow 
and it went right along the knife edge of the arm, out to the knife edge of the hand, right up to the end of the pinky. And this part of the knuckle, right, or uh, fingernail, right at the edge of the fingernail. And that's mirrored on both sides, so if you reach on the other side, and then dig in on that outer part of the muscle, on the outside of the armpit, and then tracing the line, you can see this seam on my shirt. Imagine a seam that goes perfectly along the back of your arm to your elbow, and then down along the outside, the knife edge of the forearm, and out to the edge, outer edge of the, the pinky nail. So that is the heart meridian, right? And it internally extends uh, energetically from the heart organ itself out both ends to the ends of the pinky. So uh, you can take, if you take your hand and you hold it up this way and you take your other thumb, you can use your thumb and pushing, like you're dividing the side of your hand in half like a Thomas's English muffin, right? Like you have a bagel. And you're gonna the the it's kind of has that feeling of like that fatty kind of bread, and so like you want to mash the center line, right? You feel it. How many feel it? You may feel different parts. I know I'm saying funny stuff. It's supposed to be funny. Sorry, you can laugh. It's it's okay. So all the way up to the to the nail. Try the other side. If you have pain, if it feels sore, that's that's uh, that's a sign it needs needs work. It should feel it should actually feel good. We're using. Like you're putting power to the end of the, the nail. And then all the way to the corner of the fingernail. And then we're going to use that knuckle, this outside part of the knuckle, like uh, the head of a like the head of a hammer. And we're going to take it and sort of drag it along the arm, moving downwards, and because the skin or the shirt, whatever is between the knuckle and the tissue is sticky, we're sort of rocking and rolling just a little bit, right? You can turn circles or you can turn it just the same way if you do gardening and you need to move some dirt, if you like to cook and you need to cut some, some grooves in the thing, if you're into whatever kind of art. So this is and the whole time, pressing down towards the end, towards the extent. And you, you can reach almost to the, to the heart meridian on the other side. So if you imagine four lines from each fingertip that go up across the shoulder this way, just on the outside, do the other side, and uh, working all the way up to the shoulder, and you can imagine while you're doing this rocking motion, while you're, you can apply as much pressure as you can stand, as much power, and then think of applying the pressure like an eraser on paper, right? You want to erase any of the, the lines, the, the kinks that are inside the channels that prevent the energy from moving freely. So you want to apply friction. And it's a weird one. We're holding the hand in a, in a very strange position to get that pinky knuckle. But I want you to concentrate on the line that goes from the back of your arm through your elbow and out down through the pinky. Try to reach all the way across to the heart meridian on the other side. And so this same thing we can use for the collarbone across this way. Going, remember, basic acupuncture theory is away from the center and top to bottom. So working pectoralis, the front of the deltoids, the front of your shoulders, right? And using that rolling, that same kind of rolling motion. Imagine the chi from your heart goes along that path and, and at that knuckle point, as you drag it across the meridian, like some type of uh, electric blade that stimulates the chi in the meridian to continue moving. You can give it a color too. Heart meridian is red. We're going to cover more of this stuff. By the way, the main the main two for the arms is uh, the lungs come out basically come out of the lungs and go right along the front. You know that that this this line on the 
on the bicep, there's a there's a vein that's right there on the bicep, going all the way down and splits between these two fingers. And then the other one is large intestine, which comes from those two fingers, goes back up and comes up on either side of the, the nose. <clears throat> For now, you don't need to know, except you should be able to feel a couple of distinct lines. Yeah, you can use the same corner of the pinky if you go under your ear and you just drag it vertically down. And then you can use both sides. By the way, doing both sides of head massage at once, uh, if you've taken any of Master Sue's classes, they, they have some where they do this, this massage. I said, why don't we ever do two, two at once? And they said, it can be, can be too much cheat. You can practice as you, as you feel comfortable. Uh, but if you're teaching people they have an unstable chi or they have a weak chi or maybe the chi is rising up in the head too much, only have them work on one, one hemisphere of the brain or one half of the neck at the time. And then this is, does everyone get the feeling of what's happening with this knuckle? It's sort of rolling, yeah, right? You get some, some feeling and, and there's a power behind it and there should be also energetically in the beginning, when we're working with the meridians, if you don't feel the chi innately, use your imagination along where the line would be, and eventually you will feel it. It does flow in that line, whether you sense it or not. And by putting your mind there, you become more sensitive to what that what that flow is. So this, again, the same thing. You can use this ribs on the front, on the stomach, anywhere, this kind of rolling. Uh, you can use it on your legs, but we're going to do another one another time because we just have two minutes left. Uh, and I may make, a, may make a video, something to put up to YouTube. But we're going to do one called Cricket Rubbing Its Legs that has uh, the sort of three major meridians in the legs. We're going to deal with that in a minute. Uh, you can just set your chair to the side. Before we continue, anyone have thoughts, questions, comments on anything that we have uh, worked on? Today so far, <clears throat> good. Let's uh, let's close with some with some qigong. Uh, I'm going to face in this direction. So breathing, turn your waist. Try to turn 180 degrees. Look all the way east, all the way west, and then back to the center. Breathing, inflating, stretch, and turning. Breathing, center. So the nickname for this one is the teacup. Qigong, imagine keeping your palms straight the whole time. Try to put as much bend in your wrist as possible, and you'll feel the heart meridian when you're doing this one by folding the wrist 90 degrees, and then 90 degrees again with the chan si. We're shifting weight, turning the waist, breathing deep. Do one more on each side. Go at your own pace. Remember to breathe deep. And now when you're ready, bring everything back to the center. Bring your hands together. Bring your feet together. Bring your mind together in the center. <clears throat> and then move where you think your consciousness is into your Dantian. And imagine all the energy, everything we've been doing today, all the movement is collecting in the center. Have the feeling like sand sifting into an hourglass, into the center, the chi is filling into the center, <clears throat> moving into that point, non-locality, breathing deep, move your mind up into the center, into your heart chakra. Take a second to smile to your heart. If you can, feel the energy moving on the outside of your arms, down past the elbows, on the knife edge of the hand, up to the pinky. Breathing deep, move your mind up into the center of the brain, Take a second to smile to yourself internally. Give thanks to yourself for yourself. 
Take one long, last deep breath. And that's it. <clears throat> if you have uh, questions, comments, you should know how to reach me. And uh, yeah, hopefully I think this time slot works works better. Aaron has a has a 7 p.m. appointment on, on uh, Wednesday nights, but I think uh, for, for my work this will this will be better as well. So uh, let's see. Uh, I think we'll continue to meet. Questions, comments, uh, email me, text me, call me. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your week. I'll see you uh, Saturday.